stories here about Everett. Um, the first one is uh, not necessarily directly related to Everett, but I'm going to tell it, and, uh, and you'll understand how it's connected here in a minute. Uh, this goes back to 2013. Our troop was heading to uh, Camp Bendela Tour uh, in Colorado, and we stopped off to get some gas. And uh, of course, we're all in our uniforms. And I had this uh, elderly gentleman approach me at the gas pump, and you know, he he was in scouting, and he saw that we were as well, and was asking us where we were from, and we got to talking. And as we were talking, I asked him, you know, how far he had gotten in scouting, you know, and he told me, you know, I only made it to life. And uh, when he started telling me his story, he was telling me that some of his friends at school were making fun of him for wearing this quote, silly little uniform, right? And it really got to him. And they kept, you know, kind of picking on him a little bit, and it got to him so much that he dropped out of scouting. And he never made it to evil. He loved scouting, he wanted it, but he let his friends kind of, you know, pick on him, and, and they changed his mind, he dropped out. And as he's telling me this story, I mean, I could just see it in his face, the regret that he had. And a couple of times, you know, his voice cracked, and he was almost in tears telling his story. And it had to be in a good 30, 40 years, you know, that had passed, and he, st he still regretted never finishing scouting. So just kind of hold that thought in that story. Uh, again, that was 2013, and, and I shared that story when I was scoutmaster in many of my scoutmaster conferences with scouts, trying to teach the boys to not let people, you know, influence them in the in the wrong way. Uh, fast forward to uh, 20, 2016, excuse me, 2019, and we are on our way to Camp Cedars in Nebraska. And we are sitting around one afternoon and I overhear Everett uh, telling some of the other scouts uh, in our troop that some of the guys, some of the scout, scouts in the troop were, were picking on him. And they were making fun of him because Eric uh, Everett had worn his fedora hat, and uh, I guess guess you guys are familiar with that. <laughs> he had worn his fedora hat, and some of the other scouts from other troops, you know, from other states, were were teasing him about it. And you know, instead of you know Everett letting that get to him and you know being down or, or taking it off, you know, he's back in camp. And he's telling this story to the other scouts, and we, the adults, are kind of overhearing it. And, you know, he, he could have went about his day. He could have never told anybody that he had gotten teased. But he came back, and he shared the story with the other scouts. And, you know, he, he was sitting there just telling them that, you know what, I love my hat. I'm not going to, and I'm going to wear it, because I like it, you know. And, he would, and, then he, and then he got to telling some of the other scouts, you know, you need to be yourself, you know. And I was just blown away. I was just sitting there going, wow. And I'm witnessing Everett kind of tell this story and, 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 and lead and teach his fellow scouts about how they should live their lives, right? Unlike the gentleman in the first story, right, who, who let others, you know, persuade him, uh, Everett did not, right? Everett stood his ground. Uh, he didn't get into any altercations. He just said, you know what, I'm going to be me. You guys don't like it. That's fine. I'm going to wear my hat. So, uh, you know, I was very, like I said, I was very blown away by, by the lesson that he was teaching the other scouts. Uh, later at that same camp, uh, the boys, you know, towards the end of camp, uh, all the troops end up doing a skit. And our boys had not prepared a skit, so they were, they were looking for something. And Everett came up to me, and, and I gave him some ideas of, of a skit. And he quickly learned it. And then he took on the task of teaching all the other scouts this skit. And we didn't have a lot of time. And, uh, you know, every, every uh, scout in the troop had a role in the skit. And they had some, some lines that they had to learn and remember. And uh, there was one scout in, in, in the troop who was scared that he was going to forget his lines. And he didn't want to participate. And instead, you know, and, 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 you know, Everett could have said, okay, well, you can sit out. But Everett didn't let him kind of back out. He said, look, man, it's not about, you know, being perfect up there, right? Um, if you forget your lines, we're going to be there to prompt you. And if you still mess them up, who cares? It's not about being perfect. It's not necessarily about winning. It's about all of us 
participating together and having fun. And again, I was just blown away by that attitude that he had about, you know, just, you know, not trying to be perfect. It wasn't all about winning. And, you know, there he was leading his scouts to do something together to have fun. And uh, I think that's a, a testament to you, Everett. A testament to mom and dad. You guys did a great job, so kudos, kudos to mom and dad. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to uh, dedicate today as, you know, and every day as uh, Everett Geiger Day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think we can all learn a lesson. So I, I bought my fedora hat, and, uh, and I'm going to wear it. But, you know, every, every time I look at my hat, Every time I see somebody out and about wearing a fedora hat, it reminds me of you. And you know that is a, a, a great memory uh, that I have as, as being your former scoutmaster. Uh, I don't take credit for any of this. I, you know this this came from you. This came from your parents. And looking in this audience and seeing all your family that supports you, you know, I, I know that's kind of where it came from. Uh, so thank you for this lifelong memory that you've given me. But you know. I'm going to wear this uh, with pride today. So, <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I asked Everett if there were going to be a story today, and sometimes they tell stories and sometimes they don't. And he said, no, as a little scoutmaster gets to tell stories anyway. So, uh, uh, luckily for him, I couldn't think of anything really uh, terribly. Dumb, he did random like that. So I don't have any embarrassment, but Mike must have drawn. I have a couple. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sometimes we can get something. something. We're not telling them. But anyway, I do have a couple. As it kind of goes back to camp as well. Everett has been a great scout. Um, he um, stood up and became the SPL, which is our senior patrol leader, which I think is the most difficult of all the jobs. That's the most important in the, in the troop period of all of them. And if things are going well, look to your SPL and the leadership, and things aren't, look to your SBL and the leadership. So he stepped up, and he did a very fine job. Well, he was SBL, we had gone from a lot of older scouts to about 10 or 12 of these younger scouts came in, and really changed our troop a little bit. And we went to Merit Badge Camp last summer, and he had about nine or 10, or maybe nine young scouts, and one older scout, there, the SBL. And, uh, you know, I was, Felt he was very brave to go and uh, with this uh, group of scouts, but uh, he did a great job that week, and I really got to see him elevate himself and his leadership in that week. Um, one of them was just kind of funny. Um, he was really great at somehow every time we had to get into line to eat. I don't know how I ever figured out, but he always knew exactly the place to go that we'd be the first in line. And he'd scope it out, and he'd look, and he'd figure it out, and he did it every darn time. We were a smaller troop, so he figured out how to get it. So we always got to eat first, so I appreciate that. And so he'll be a great pilot, because he's going to help us figure out where those places are to land. And, you know, so that was that. That's where I saw he had a great future there. Except I will say one day it was a little for naught, because I told the boys at the end of the week, one thing we cannot be is we're not late for flag ceremonies, meals, and anything. One day we were late. We were ever did all of that, and we got everybody right in the right spot, and we were getting ready to go, and I said, oh no, we're last. We were late. We can't do it. And so, <laughs> that one time. But he still had picked right, so I was give a chance to pick right. Uh, another kind of funny one that tells you sometimes got masters of us. So he said, I want to do a, a skit. And it was the, the, the cool, what's the, what is it? The cool theory. theory, there he goes. I had to go download it and all that for him and all that. And I'm great, a bunch of Douglas Adams fans, kind of Douglas Adams about hamburgers and he turned into things and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I convinced him to get a few guys to act it out. And I didn't even let him do the whole thing because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be over everyone's head because it's just wild. So I let him do it. Everybody. The next day at Scoutmaster Conference, they're like, turned to me and like, oh my goodness. Everyone's like, that was the best. Oh yes, that was great, that was awesome. They all talked about it, even, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And they talked about no other skits, but they talked about ours and people came up to me and I'm sure they came up to Everett after that. And I said, all right, this shows what, what do Scoutmasters do? We don't, we don't always, uh, always don't know what's right. That's why you let them do what they're gonna do and whatnot. But where I really saw him shine 
is during that week leading those young scouts. They really were very new to scouting, and he, when we first got to Worth Ranch, it was about 112 degrees, and we jumped out of the cars, and that was like dropping into a war zone. Like people, we lost half our group, we're here and there, we're hot, people are throwing up. It was a mess, and by the time we get to the evening and whatnot, I never had a chance to sit and tell the scouts many important things, one of which is that they do inspections of our, our, of our camp each and every day. So when we left on Monday morning, uh, I knew we weren't really going to be good. But once we got that afternoon, I go to Everett, and I said, Everett, here, here's the list of stuff. And I said, I'm going to challenge the scouts to get 100 points by the end. We had started with like 75. I said, I'm going to, you know, so I said, what do you think maybe we can work on first and all that? And Everett came up with a plan. It was neat to see every day they chipped away at one of those, one, one of those items. So one day the flag goes up. So here's Everett showing them how to put the flag up. And our troop flag up another day. Little by little, he was guiding them through what needed to happen. So on the last day, we finally got our 100 points. And uh, everybody got ice cream, I think, or something like that. <laughs> and so it was just a great way that he took that time and he took that effort. He was a great leader that week. And I really got to see him just rise above and shine. And then I was like, this guy, he's got it. He's got that leadership. And uh, he obviously also knows how to make an audience laugh. So uh, congratulations, Everett. You deserve this very much. And uh, I know you're going to do great things in your future. Lesson for everyone here.
Mr. and Mrs. Geiger please come forward to be awarded your parents' pin. Please stay and join us for refreshments. 